A WKU professor and team are using new research methods to predict global events and natural disasters. WBKO's Michael Gosselin tells us how they've been able to do it. Dr. Kerry Barrett's team forecasted a natural disaster correctly. So how do they do it? It can be a little confusing, but it's about looking at social moods and perceptions and turning all of that into data. Dr. Barrett and students she works with can forecast social moods and perceptions to predict global events and even natural disasters. They start by looking at news stories and then... We look at them for eight mood factors and we rate them. For instance, we might look at how much calmness is in the story, how much violence, how much uncertainty, how much optimism. And over time, we project the trends of those factors and then we can look at, okay, what are these factors likely to be next week or next month? Last year, they forecasted chaotic social perceptions in Japan, which led to the prediction of a natural disaster. It's one of those things that you kind of don't want to be right about because you don't want to see the devastation, but it was also very exciting to see that the research actually works and the um, way that the data is compiled. It, it's very accurate. And, and all I could think is like, what, really? And Because this was right during the time frame we had expected it to happen, too. They even put out a YouTube video warning of the events that were to come. And at the core of the research lies the concept of instinct. It's, it's a concept so simple that it goes back to, you know, the way that animals move and shift out of the way when there's some kind of natural disaster coming towards them. It's that natural instinct, and that's kind of what we bring to the table. If people could pay attention to that and get back to that natural instinct, then you can shift and kind of prevent some of the... Uh, fallout from the disaster. And so, what about the end of the world in 2012? Well, we tell people if they're looking for the end of the world in 2012, they're likely going to be disappointed, and they'll have plenty of things to deal with in 2013. Along with natural disasters, they look at economic turmoil, instability in countries around the world as well. However, this new research may not last as funding resources have been exhausted. If you'd like to learn more about this research, go to our web channel, WBKO.com. Gene? A very interesting research is taking place on campus that involves forecasting social moods. This research has even been proven effective for past events. Forecasting is very difficult, especially in forecasting moods of people, but this team at Western has a unique way of predicting these moods and perceptions. First, we basically watch the news uh, or read current events and we score those in eight categories. For instance, we look at how much optimism is there, how much calmness, how much violence, how much uncertainty, things like that. Uh, we look for, are the stories about home and family? Are the stories about geopolitics? And we rate those. And by following those things over time, we can project in the near future what the social mood and perception is going to be about next week or next month. After the mood is predicted, the team can then discuss what event they think will be occurring in the weeks or months to follow. We're guessing what could go with this mood. Um, so we could be wrong, yes, uh, but it's about probability. It's about, gee, the, there's a higher risk of, let's say, the stock market going down next week. It's a risk, it's a probability, so it's not always going to happen. And like you, you brought up, we don't predict events, we're forecasting social mood and perception. And there's events that go with that. Before the tsunami hit Japan last year, the team had a chance to prove that their research and predictions were working. And so we're like, okay, it's Japan. What could possibly happen in this time frame over there that might cause such like a drastic change? And are like, well, it's a seismic zone and it's prone to tidal waves. So I don't know, maybe a massive earthquake, which kind of spooked us all because, well, you don't expect to, you know, kind of sort of predict something happening and then have it happen almost exactly when you expect it. The research will now benefit not just campus or even the U.S., but globally. It's very interesting because not just do you look at the uh, mood perceptions of an individual place, but you look at it globally and you can look at nature, you know, weather related events, you can look at geopolitical events, um, 
you know, and it's a good indicator of events all globally, not just in one specific area. So it's very educational in that respect. For more information on the team's research as well as the outcomes of the research, you can visit the website at moodcompass.com. For Bowling Green Today, I'm Emily McKinney.